It helps if you flip it the right way. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. It is so good to be with you this morning on this uh, blue sky day. I think the sky is still blue. It was blue when I left at 8.30 this morning. So I'm hoping it's blue and it will stay blue all day. Here's wishing you a blue sky day. It is good to be with you this morning and want to uh, bring a few things to your attention. We um, have um, developed a short bulletin. If you are a bulletin person and you would like a bulletin, they are at either entrance and you can ask the ushers for one if, if you would like um, to let you know what's happening, who the players are. Um, this morning, the only player you will see here is me, <laughs> um, and ask for prayers for both John and Lori um, as they have tested positive for COVID. Um, so be with the Sloans um, this week. Um, there's also, as you came in on either door, a um, another thing that looks like this. And as John said last week, if you if you put them together, then you have a full piece of paper. Um, I like half sheets of paper, personally, myself. Um, so is our calendar of events, what's happening in the life of the church, and a few things to, um, but half sheets you just drop because they're not as stable. Um, <laughs> the uh, 412 Tweens group is collecting um, items for care packages to send to our college students. So uh, we ask that you do that, um, think about how you would like to support them, and those things are small things because we're going to pack them in a box and mail them, and we don't want to have to spend like $40 to mail a, a box of goodies. So candy gum, um, granola bars, um, $5 gift cards to Starbucks or Casey's or um, any of those things are good as well. Um, so we are collecting those, and the tweens will be packing those on the 9th, Wednesday the 9th. So we ask that you bring them by the 8th of February, which is a Tuesday. Um, or you can just bring them next week, which is the 6th of February, um, to bless our college students, to let them know that we as a church family love them and are thinking about them, um, especially during this Valentine's season. Also, our... Um, Midweek at Midtown programs return this week, so um, that is our adult Bible study, our youth groups, our children's, children's group um, return, not choir, not choir, not choir, not this week, not this week, sorry, my note said choir, and I was like, that's not right. Um, so at 6.30, our Midweek at Midtown programs return. And just a reminder that um, session decided at their last session meeting that, that all of our um, eating gatherings are put on hold. So that is dinners for Midweek at Midtown and also um, refreshments following worship in, in Fellowship Hall um, have been suspended for the time being until um, session determines that it is, it is a good time to start those things again. Um, also, next Sunday, I hope you have on your calendar, is our annual meeting, and we will be meeting in the sanctuary following worship for that time. Um, or if you are online, if you watch us from home, we are doing a hybrid meeting, um, so you are welcome to log in to Zoom. That information will, will come at your request. Um, annual reports are ready, and they are on the welcome desk this morning, so if you're here in person, you can pick up a paper copy. If you are not a paper person and would just like a digital copy, then you can email the church office and one will be sent to you, and with that sending of the digital copy will also be the login information for the Zoom meeting. Um, because of the hybrid format of the meeting, we are asking that all questions be written in advance and submitted to either John or Leanne Johnson, our cook of session, by, I think it's Wednesday. I'm just going to say Wednesday. Wednesday by midnight, so that gives them enough time to find the answers to your questions. Um, and so that is how questions at the annual meeting will be handled, is in advance. So if there's something that you would like to ask, um, please submit that in a timely fashion so that answers can be acquired. 
Also, um, we are in the process of collecting devotions for our Lenten devotional. So I encourage you to think about writing a short, short devotion. Um, and that's scripture, a thought, and a prayer. And you can submit those to Karen Krupa or to myself um, for submission into the Lenten devotional. And um, that deadline is the 15th of February because Lent is just around the corner, <laughs> um, amazingly enough. Uh, so I invite you to participate in that way. Uh, and just one more thing for your calendar to think ahead is um, Super Bowl Sunday. This year, if you follow football, which I don't, um, I follow commercials. Um, the, the Super Bowl has shifted a week. So normally in years past, well, way, way back, the Super Bowl used to be the last Sunday in January. And then it shifted to the first Sunday in February. And now it has shifted once again. So the Super Bowl is now on the 13th of February. So here at First Presbyterian Church, we will have our Super Bowl of Caring and invite you to think about bringing food donations or monetary donations. Um, and our youth will be collecting those donations and all donations received will go to our own um, Hand Up Food Pantry. So hope that you will consider um, supporting our food pantry with our Super Bowl of Caring. So I think those are all of my notes about what's happening and what you need to know. Um, I mean, you need to know lots of things, but those were the highlights of what you needed to know. <laughs> yes? The choir doesn't know yet, but I've postponed choir for another two weeks. Okay. So instead of starting on the second, we will start on the 16th. All right. So I will relay that message. Um, for those of you that are in choir, um, the decision has been made to postpone choirs starting until for two weeks. So not this week and not next week, but the following week, and that coincides with um, the session meeting and their determination of, of meals and such um, back to normal operating procedures. So if you're in choir, just note that, that um, that would be the 16th of February that choir would be back um, in, in session. So Friends, it is good to be with you this morning, and I invite you to stand to greet those around you. For those of you online, I invite you to check in, to wave, say hi, and let us know that you are worshiping with us this morning. Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Please join us for our first praise song, Here I Am to Worship. Thank you. 
Friends, we are here to worship. We are here to worship the God who loves us. So let us together raise our voices in our call to worship. We gather today seeking understanding of the greatest command to love God and one another. We'll tell others we love them and feel it in our hearts, but we are unsure and desire to know what love truly is. Paul shares what love is and what love should not be. He guides us to the truth. God is love and love is God. And if faith in God is in our hearts, love is there as well. Let us worship God. feel that that was our prayer this morning, how much we need God in the daily of our lives. And as we come to worship together here today, we have that in our minds, that we are always in need of God, always in need of God's love and forgiveness. So let us take a moment and together pray a prayer of confession followed by our own time of silent prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, We say we love each other. We send love notes and love emojis, but also send mixed messages. We are often disrespectful 
and mean-spirited to some, while professing love for all. We may confess secret love for a few, but reveal hidden hate for many. We boast of a heart full of love, compassion, and faith, but we come up empty for those we deem to be unworthy. Show us that true love is your love, without prejudice, without exception, without question, without debt, and without limits. Hear now our silent prayers. Lord, in your mercy, we lift these prayers to you. Amen. And friends, there is good news. When Jesus breathed his last, he did so as Lord of all. He loves us truly and fully, leading us, carrying us, walking beside us, forgiving us, and giving us life everlasting. Thanks be to God. to have a seat in the boys and girls that are present. Sorry, I'm scanning the room. Oh, there's one at least. I know there's a few more. They must be coming. Boys and girls that are present, Jonathan, come forward. I'm glad there's at least one. I hear the others. How are you this morning? Good. Good? Are you tired? A little bit. All right, here they come. Hurry! Oh, good. I'm glad you made it. All right. So, the golden rule. Do you know what the golden rule is? No? Never heard of it? Have you ever heard of it? The golden rule? Uh -uh. Never heard of it? Oh my, well, I just happen to have it written here. So the golden rule says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Have you heard that before? Unto, what is unto? Unto, so, so, so treat other people as you would want them to treat you. So do to others what you would want them to do to you. Have you heard that before? Yes. Yeah. yeah? So what would that mean? Good morning. What do you think that would mean? Do to others what you would want them to do to you. Right. Right. If you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. If you're mean to them, they'll probably be mean to you. Right. Any other thoughts about what that might mean? No. Do you? The, oh, it looks like the candle has an idea. Oh. Well, I think if we think about it like love, right? So we are supposed to love others, right? We're supposed to love everybody. And here's the thing about love. We don't have to like everybody, but we have to love everybody everybody. Have you heard that before? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense? Oh, I know. It doesn't? So that doesn't mean that you have an idea? What's that? Well, technically, I know what that means. Okay. Do you want to share it? Or do you want to keep it to yourself? Okay. 
Okay, because you can't, that's okay. It's a, it's, sometimes I can't exactly remember either. So it means that, say there's somebody at school who maybe is a bully, or maybe someone that's not very nice, right? And it's really hard to like them, right? It's really hard to want to be their friend. Hey, can you guys come sit still for me? Thank you. So sometimes, has that ever happened to you? Where there's been somebody at school that might be a little bit mean, might, might not be very nice? Has that ever happened to you? Never? Man, I must have gone to the wrong kind of school. How about you? Is there somebody that you can think of? Maybe that, that isn't all that nice. You I try and be... I know you don't go to school yet. Sometimes maybe even our brothers or our sisters might, might be mean, and we might not like them at that moment. But even though we might not like them at that moment, we still love them, right? Just say yes. Thank you. Okay. Right? We don't have to like everybody, but we sure should love everybody. Right? Okay, good. Monkey says yes, so it is true. All right. So I want you guys to think about that this week. And think about this golden rule. To do unto others. So do to others. Treat them how you want to be treated. Okay? Do you think you can do that? See, your classroom agreement, the first rule is the golden rule to treat others how you want to be treated. It's at the top of the page because it's number one most important. Yes, Oliver? Ah, oh, that's good. All right. So. I want you guys to think, keep that in mind this week, okay? Let's pray. You guys, stay on your bottoms until we're finished. All right. God, thank you for the reminder that the golden rule gives us to treat other people as we want to be treated. Help us to remember that and help us to always love everyone, even if we might not like them in a particular moment. We ask these things in Jesus' name and all God's children said. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. song you are the well the one I'm drawing from you are my refuge my whole life long where else would I go surely my God is the strength of my soul your love defends Although the battle, it rages on, the war is already won. I know the war is already won. Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me.
my God, He's the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me. Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all Our scripture this morning comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not love, I am a noisy gong or a clinging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all of my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, but we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put my childish ways aside. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, meet us here in this place. Open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, our hearts to know you, and our minds to understand you. May your words be my words. In Jesus' name, amen. So as many of you know, and I've said it many times, I don't watch the news. Well, I try not to watch the news. There are many reasons for this choice, but the main reason is it is filled with so much bad news. Violence, hate, a general lack of treating one another, of not treating one another like human beings. A true absence of love for one another. So recently, when I was watching the news, because I try to watch the news, the evening news, so I am informed about what's happening in the world around me. And every once in a while, there is an uplifting story of neighbors helping neighbors, of strangers reaching out, of giving up their time to benefit someone who is hurting. Those are the stories in the news that I like. And as I thought about that latest uplifting story that I saw on the news, 
it actually made me a little bit sad. Sad that these acts of basic human kindness were such newsworthy events. Rare occurrences in the current state of affairs that we find ourselves in. And as I continued to think about those acts of human kindness over the past few weeks and the need for more such actions in the world and honestly in my own life, I kept coming back to the question, what is love? And more specifically, how is love different for those of us that are Christ followers? As Christians, we are given a command to love. All throughout the New Testament, Jesus speaks of loving one another in one form or another over and over again. We have parables like the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son that speak of instances of great love through sacrifice. And we have teachings like the Golden Rule, do unto others, and the greatest commandment, love God, love neighbor, that teach us who to love. But perhaps the most powerful one of his teachings on the topic happens in the upper room on the night before his death. On that last night Jesus was with his disciples, he said to them, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It is here we learn how and why we are to love. As followers of Christ, we are commanded to love others as God in Christ loves us. It is through that love that we'll be known as disciples. Not through our memory verse recitation that we can give in any instance of life, or not how often we attend Bible study, or how much time we spend at church, or even how much quiet time or prayer time we spend with God on a daily basis. All those things are important for our spiritual growth. But the one thing that will make us stand out as Christians in this world is the way we love. So I thought perhaps it was time for a checkup to see how we are loving. And the first step in this checkup is to assess our definition of love. How do we as disciples define love? We have a different perspective on love and not as the world does. The dictionary defines love as an intense feeling or deep affection. For us, love is much more than a feeling. It is also defined as a great interest and pleasure in something. Again, it is much deeper than an interest. Love for us. The best definition of love for us is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Our scripture for today that I read just a few minutes ago. It's a familiar passage, one that I'm sure we've all heard at one time or another. Usually, it's heard at a wedding. But I want to read it one more time, the definition of love from the message translation. And I love the way that Eugene Peterson translates this familiar passage. He puts love in perspective of everyday life. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 in the message says this, Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Isn't that a beautiful definition of what love is? It puts into perspective that love 
doesn't do a lot of things that we as humans do. And things that we sometimes find ourselves doing are the exact opposite of what love truly is. But more importantly, it is a reminder that love is about trusting God, looking for the best, and keeping going. So love defined, love in perspective, we continue with our checkup. So how are you doing so far? Okay, so so. So the next question for us to consider is how do we love? Again, this is different than the world loves as we are called to love wholeheartedly and sacrificially like God loves us. Again, Paul writes, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but a creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith to say to the mountains, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love is a way of life. All that we do, all that we say, all that we are is to be done with love, without condition, without fanfare, without even acknowledgement. This kind of deep love is to be second nature, like breathing. How often do you have to stop and think about how to breathe? Honestly, unless there is something wrong, breathing is automatic. And love should be the same way. Love is not only talking the talk, talking about love, talking about how we love, who we love, how much we love. But it is also, more importantly, walking the walk. Walking in love is loving your enemies, loving your neighbors, loving yourself, Loving anyone who comes across your path who needs love, which is everyone. Love without condition, without pretense, in any and all situations. Love is easier said than done, but that is the point. More doing and less saying. So how are you loving? I will tell you that practice makes perfect. So with love defined and an understanding of how we are to love comes a more difficult question. The question of why do we love? What is our motivation for love? And why is love so important? This is perhaps the easiest to answer but the hardest to live into. We love because God is love, and we're made in the image, in his image and likeness. The very fabric of our being requires us to love. Think about that for a moment. Really let that soak deep into your core. We know that God is love. Perhaps, like me, you've heard that all your life. Maybe you grew up singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Join in. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. A simple reassurance that Jesus loves us, right? He loves us all the time, no matter what. I'm going to say it again, no matter what, Jesus loves us. And here's where it gets harder. 
We are to love with that same love. Jesus loves us no matter what. We are to love others no matter what, which is a part of our very being. In Genesis, the first chapter of the Bible, we are told that God made us in God's very likeness. 127 says, God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God is love. We are love. We are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of love. Love is the foundation of who we are. From the very beginning, it has been inside us. It is a love that is different from how the world defines it and how the world sees it. In 1 John 4, 8 through 10, John writes this. He says, my beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. And this is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about, not what we once upon a time loved, Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. We love because God loved us first. We love with the same unconditional love with which God loves us. We love because Jesus loved us so much that he died for us. While we were still sinners, he died for us. Jesus is the love of God incarnate, made flesh and bone. He was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for us because of love. That is the definition of love. We love because it is who we are and what we are made to do. A love that isn't defined by the rest of the world. A love that is above and beyond how the world loves. A love that is at the very core of who we are. Knitted into the fabric of our very being. A love that radiates from deep within us, shining into the darkness. Love comes from God.
If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, that takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, looks for the best and never looks back, but keeps going until the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the, water, the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. When the lack of love is rampant, the love of God pouring through us shines even brighter. Friends, this is love. We are love. In a world that seems to be overwhelmingly unloving, glimpses of love are newsworthy. Wouldn't it be amazing if those glimpses of love were everywhere, so commonplace that they weren't breaking news stories? But they were just stories. And what if they were so frequent that every day they were on the news, sharing the love with the tens of thousands who watch the evening news, replacing all the instances of hate, violence, unkindness. If that was the case, then I would definitely watch the news every day, waiting to see how love was lived. So friends, no matter how you might define love, the truth is that you are love. You are the love of God incarnate in the world in which we live. You are the love that everyone will see, know, and experience. Love is God. God is love. And friends, so are we. Amen. me mm-hmm.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are freed. Loving God, we thank you for the ability we have to come and gather. Whether here in person or from the comfort of our homes, whether it is now or later in the week, we thank you for the connection that we have with one another as the body of Christ. On this day, Lord, we are mindful of those who are grieving loss. We pray for the family of Peg Robson, who passed away earlier this month. Be with them as they grieve the loss. We also pray for the Gustafson family on the passing of Karen. Be with her children, her grandchildren, her husband, her in-laws. Be with them all during this time as they grieve the loss. We thank you for her life. And we also lift up to you those that are in need of your presence, of your healing touch, of your encouragement in their life. Lord, we pray for Carol Hunter and ask that you be with her. Make yourself known to her as she faces cancer diagnoses. We pray for relief from pain. Pray for the doctors and staff as they determine how to move forward. We pray for those, Lord, who are dealing with COVID, those that are sick, that have tested positive, and those on the front lines that are dealing with it day after day. We pray for safety, protection. We pray for an end to this pandemic. And God, we thank you that we can come before you to lay those things that are heavy on our hearts before you, knowing that even if we don't know the words to say, you know just what to do. So in this moment of silence, Lord, hear the prayers that are on our hearts.
We thank you, Lord, that your spirit is able to intercede for us. Hear now our prayers as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, as we gather here with grateful hearts, grateful for the ability we have to gather, to worship, to sing our praises, to lift our prayers, to hear God's word, we also have the opportunity to gratefully, joyfully give back to God. At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward to receive our gifts. Will you pray with me? Generous, loving God, 
We come to you with hearts overflowing with gratitude. Gratitude for the love that you show us every day, for the blessings we receive, no matter how big or how small. God, help us to be mindful of all those things, to live with grateful hearts, to love with grateful hearts. And God, may these gifts which we now give, may they be multiplied and used for your good and your glory, both here and around the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, no matter what definition of love you use, know that God is love and you are love. And may we this week live in to that love. And as you go, may you know that you do not go alone, but God goes with you, always before you, behind you, beside you, all around you, holding you tightly in the palm of his hand. And may you go in love. Amen. Thank you.